right, 9.2 is called separation of variables. So what we're gonna look at in 9.2 and 9.3 are differential equations that take on particular forms. And if it takes on either one of those two forms, then we've got a method to solve these things. Um, it's solving differential equations is not very different from integration. So when integrals take certain forms, we've got certain techniques, right? So sometimes we need a u substitution and with practice we get really good at recognizing those situations. Other times, you know, we learned in the beginning of this course integration by parts, right? So um, if it looks a certain way, we know the technique. So the same idea with differential equations. Um, separation of variables, what is that? A separable differential equation is one that can be thought of in this form. Uh, dy over dx, uh, sometimes we write y prime, sometimes it's, it's more convenient to write dy over dx for the derivative. Um, I, this is the preferred way in this section so, and, and it'll, it'll make sense why when we see how to solve these. But anyway, dy over dx, if it can be thought of as some function of x multiplied with some function of y, g of x times f of y. It's like we've separated the x's and the y's and we've got a product between them. If it's possible to do that, then we call it a separable differential equation. So let me just show you a couple examples before we get into the, te the solving techniques. Uh, here's one, right? So dy over dx equals negative e to the x times y squared, right? I've got a function of x multiplied with a function of y. So I've, I've separated the x's and the y's, if you will. Here's another one. This time it's called y prime, but okay. The book tends to call these things y prime, by the way. Um, 6x minus 9x squared divided by 2y plus 4. You're like, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. I see the x's and the y's, and okay, I guess, but you're supposed to be taking a product. This is divided. Well, that's true. We are dividing, but you could think of it as a product if you did it like this. You could think of it as 6x minus 9x squared times 1 over 2y plus 4. And now you've got an x, function of x multiplied with a function of y. And it's separable now. Separable always means um, that you're multiplying in that sense. Okay, okay. So we've... You might have to... All right, anyway. Moving on. How do you solve these things? So I'm just going to lay it out for you. Um, here's the technique to solving a separable differential equation. So here's what it would look like maybe originally. Uh, we're literally going to um, separate the x's and the y's on different sides of the equal sign. So since we're multiplying here, we're gonna divide this function over this way. So we get the function y on the left. And then, and here's why it's really convenient to write it as dy over dx. We're gonna multiply both sides by dx. We're gonna multiply this dx right over here. Now that may seem a little sketchy from a mathematically rigorous, mathematically correct perspective. Don't worry about that. In differential equations, it's kind of like physics and things, all these applications. Um, it turns out it works out in the end. So we can bend the rules of mathematical correctness a little bit because in the end, it's, it's, gonna, it's gonna be true every time. So we're gonna multiply this dx over onto this side, or it's like the differential, right? You can do that. And we're gonna arrive at this. So now we have all the y's over here. We have all the x's over there. And to, um, as the last statement, okay, once, once you've got the y's and the x's, then what? Hey, let's integrate both sides. Let's get that all on the same screen. If we integrate both sides, oh my gosh, look at that. We've got the integral with the dy. 
We've got the integral and a dx and an x and a y. Okay. So it all works out in the end. Uh, this integral will equal that integral. And of course, at this point, you would perform the antiderivatives and then you would have a solution. And if you can even solve it for y, uh, you could get an explicit solution perhaps. Sometimes you're just stuck with an implicit solution. But anyway, the case being, at this point, you would integrate both sides and go from there. All right, let's get into one. Simple steps, right? Here we go. Uh, so the directions say, find the general solution. Then we will find the particular solution which, which satisfies the initial condition. Okay, so the big thing is finding that general solution. Um, and then if you remember the, the steps to find a particular solution um, from the end of 9.1, we're going to follow those same steps. So here's what we've got in part A. Uh, we're going to start off with that example from before, dy over dx equals negative e to the x y squared. And at this moment, we're going to be told this initial condition as well. But of course, that doesn't come in until the second part of the problem. OK, so here we go. Uh, we've got our separable differential equation. So we're going to put the y's on the left, the x's on the right starting from here. So what does that mean? Okay, we're going to divide our y squared over and we're going to multiply our dx over giving us this. Then we're going to integrate both sides. Okay, no big deal. Now can we actually perform these integrals, right? That's, that's the tricky part. Do you know how to do these antiderivatives? Well, these aren't too bad. Um, I'm going to rewrite my 1 over y squared as y to the negative 2. I'm going to pull that negative out. You know, why not? Kind of doing these simultaneously. Uh, so an antiderivative here, negative y to the negative first. And here, well, antiderivative of e to the x. And you notice that when I do my antiderivatives, I only put the plus C on the X side. Um, again, this is kind of like, the, it's like, are we bending the rules of math? Here, really not, not nearly as much as a moment ago. Um, think about it this way. So if I was to put a plus C over here on the left and a plus C here on the right, these wouldn't be the same C. I would need to like, designate plus c1 and plus c2 because they don't have to equal each other. They're two different arbitrary constants. If I do that, then couldn't I combine them? Couldn't I then subtract c1 from both sides and get rid of it here? And when I combine these two c's, it's like it just becomes a new c, right? The difference between two arbitrary constants is just some other arbitrary constant. Hopefully you follow that logic. The moral of the story is we only add the C on the X side. Because in the end, we'd really prefer to isolate Y. So we'll put that C over here. OK, so hmm, all right. Can we clean this up a little bit? Hey, what if we multiply both sides by a negative? Okay, let me raise this up a little bit. Oh, oh, I didn't do that yet. My mistakes. I just converted this to a fraction, left everything the same. Okay, that looks good. That looks good. Um, so this is a solution. Uh, it's an implicit solution because we have not solved for y yet. So we might be satisfied with this. Um, but usually if we can get an explicit solution, we really prefer that. And here it's not too, too bad. Now at this point, let's multiply everything by a negative. And we'll get this. Now at this point, you probably thought that um, I messed up. 
Okay, so I multiplied this by a negative. I multiplied that by a negative. Hey, shouldn't it be minus c? Why is it still plus c? What's up with that? Well, I guess you could write minus c if you really wanted to, but isn't a negative arbitrary constant the same as a positive arbitrary constant? It's still an arbitrary constant. And, you, and with arbitrary constants, uh, we prefer to think of them as being added versus subtracted. So that c did get multiplied by a negative. So technically, this is not the same c as it was before. But we're still going to say plus c because it's arbitrary. OK, that's kind of strange. And, and it, again, feels like we are really bending the rules of math. But it, you know, it's a number. And maybe it's positive, maybe it's negative. Doesn't matter if you add or subtract. OK, finally, hey, I've got 1 over y here. I'm going to take the reciprocal of both sides. So 1 over y becomes y. And the reciprocal of this entire side, I've got 1 over e to the x plus c. Now I've got myself a nice explicit solution. And I've answered the first part of the question. Now what people tend to ask at this point is, wait a second, wait a second. So you applied a negative to the c, but then it just it just became a new C, it didn't change. But when you took the reciprocal, you know, what's up with that? Why don't we just have one over e to the x and then plus C sort of on the side? Well, because now that you cannot change, right? So if I take the reciprocal of both sides, I have to do it to the entire side. I can't just do it to part of the side. It has to be to everything. Um, and that really does change, right? If I plug in a value of C, you know, to this, uh, this is the same value of C, right? Like I can't have the plus C, just like an order of operations, sort of a, an argument. Okay, again, hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> um, and if we were in class, we could probably have a much better discussion about that. So if that is concerning to you, why it does not change here, but why it does end up in the denominator there, please bring that concern to our live meeting and we can have a much better back and forth about it. Maybe everybody understands. You know, maybe I'm just uh, imagining things. OK, so we're not quite done with this question. Um, we've got the general solution. Um, should have written out the explicit general solution. OK. Um, we still need to look at that initial condition. So earlier, hopefully you wrote it, the, in, the initial condition was y of 0 equals 1 third. So that means when x equals 0, y equals 1 third. So we're going to plug those in. Plug in 1 third for our y. Plug in 0 for our x. We're going to solve, figure out the value of c. Of course, e to the 0 equals 1. Uh, and maybe if you take the reciprocals of both sides, you get this. And of, of course, c will equal 2 here. Now we're not done. We want to take that value of c and plug it back in. There it is, plugged into the implicit solution we got earlier, if you wanted to do that. Or we could plug it into the explicit solution. This is really the preferred. Uh, either way, plug it back into your solution. OK, I think we're going to uh, end this video here. We've got um, another example similar to this uh, in, uh, to start off the next video. This is, by the way, our particular solution. Okay, see you in the next one.